The world is on edge for another day as Israeli troops prepare a ground invasion of Gaza. We are gathering information from all sides as this war intensifies. Here are some of the powerful stories we heard earlier. Thought that my life is going to end. I wanted wanted to uh, write to all my friends that I love them. I won't uh, envision or uh, ask any of my largest enemies to go through the process that we're going through the last couple of days. I've lived my whole life in Gaza, so I know what's an aggression like. But this time, after seven aggressions I've witnessed, never witnessed anything this harsh, very close. Uh, no one is safe around me. We have a team on the ground in Israel. We begin with Holly Williams in Tel Aviv, who has more on some of the brutality that's being uncovered. United in its grief, and in the horror of what it's been subjected to, Israel has begun to bury its dead. Rescue workers have reported seeing atrocities at the Kafar Aza Kibbutz, a small farming community stormed by Hamas gunmen. You saw multiple children saw and babies who'd been beheaded. Children, not only children, not only multiple, I saw a lot more that cannot be described. Where do we need to go? While filming in southern Israel today, the air raid alarm sent us running for cover. In areas close to the Gaza Strip, where Hamas militants have their base, rockets take just seconds to hit. Jacob Landau is a dual US-Israeli citizen who's come here from Brooklyn, New York, to help recover bodies from the communities where Hamas militants went on a killing spree. I can see how painful this is for you. It's, it's, not, it's not me. It's painful for, for our country, for our people. It's not a personal thing. It's all of us. It's all of us. The massacres of civilians have shaken Israel's sense of security, and so has the sophistication of the attack. A Hamas propaganda video appears to show how they used a weaponized drone to attack Israeli communication towers along the border on Saturday. That's where the militants, designated as a terrorist group by the US, breached the barrier that Israel uses to contain Palestinians in Gaza. And we absolutely know that the rockets are Major Libby advanced. Weiss told us the militants' rockets are also getting deadlier with help from Iran. We know that in the last decade, Hamas has invested millions and millions of dollars in improving their weapons. They are more precise. They are more far-reaching within Israeli territory. Israel's called up 360,000 reservists, and a ground invasion of the Gaza Strip is expected in the days ahead. Gaza's already under siege, ordered by Israel with no food or medicine allowed across the border. Its only power plant is no longer functioning. Its biggest hospital only has enough fuel for three more days. Home to about two million people, around half of them under the age of 18. And roughly the size of Philadelphia. Gaza's now being pulverized by near constant Israeli airstrikes. When the airstrikes hit, we ran barefoot, says this woman, who's now taken shelter in the grounds of a hospital. They are all victims, she says. They're all women, children. What did they do? Some call Gaza the world's largest open-air prison because with a blockade in place, most residents cannot leave. They are not our target. Uh, but they're still being killed. And we, we understand that. Loss of life here is tragic. But again, we must make sure that Hamas cannot launch massacres and slaughter civilians as they did this past weekend. It is just a reality with which we cannot live anymore. Holly Williams joins me now. Holly, you spent a lot of time in Gaza. Talk more about what it's like when these airstrikes happen. Good evening, Jeff. Yeah, well, look, I was in Gaza back in 2014 when it was being hammered by Israeli airstrikes. And I can tell you, it was absolutely terrifying. It's not just the very logical fear of, you know, being killed. I think what a lot of people don't understand is when those airstrikes come down, they are extremely loud. And if you're close enough, they actually make the earth shudder. 
Um, and so the psychological impact of that in an area that's so densely populated you know, it's, it's really hard to put into words. Now, there are efforts to open a humanitarian corridor uh, for people in Gaza, but they don't really seem to be getting anywhere. Most people there don't have the option to leave, and now they're running out of time. Holly, so many people taken as hostage back across the border. Do we know at this point if there are any efforts to negotiate for them? Well, look, we spoke to one Israeli hostage negotiator today. He's actually negotiated directly with Hamas. In fact, he helped negotiate the release of Gilad Shalit, uh, a captured Israeli soldier back uh, in 20, 2011. He was held for about five years. Now, he was not at all hopeful about the prospect uh, for negotiating the release uh, of those hostages. There are, according to Hamas, more than 100 of them. In fact, he said that pretty much the only way they'll be freed is in a military operation. There has, meanwhile, been this exchange of fire in the north, and everyone's watching the north now as well as the south, the border with Lebanon in particular, as this potential risk of a, of a larger conflict grows. Yeah, that's right. So there's been an exchange of fire between Israel and Hezbollah along this country's northern border. Now, look, it's not entirely surprising that Hezbollah might want to get involved in this. It's also an Islamist militant group. It's got deep ties to Hamas and Iran. It's also a designated a terrorist organization uh, by the U.S. And yes, as you said, the fear here is that somehow this widens out into a bigger Middle Eastern uh, conflict. And in fact, we know from a, a senior Pentagon official that the U.S. is deeply concerned about that becoming uh, a second front in this conflict. Okay, Holly Williams in Tel Aviv, thank you.